Welcome back, my friends. I am Melanie with Melanie Smith Stamps, and today we're playing with alcohol inks and Yupo paper. So when I was in Myrtle Beach, I visited a new friend, and we crafted life together. Her name's Lori Wolf. She invited me over to her house. She's part of my craft life together with Spellbinders and More Facebook group, and she was very sweet and invited me and Randy over, or should I say Randy and I, over to her house. And she let me play with alcohol inks for the very first time. So we made these little backgrounds. Randy actually made this one. Like I said, he'd never played either with it. I made these two backgrounds for my first two tries. And then I made this background and when I got home I did the blackout technique with it. So this is what we're going to do today and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. When I got home I started playing and I did some of these. These actually let me put these in the order that I did them. This was the very first one I did, and I was starting with a full 5x7 sheet of Yupo paper. Now, this was my first play with m just me, you know, home alone, playing in my craft room. So I was just experimenting. I was doing some drips, and I played and played and played and then, you know, bleached it out with the alcohol and played some more and bleached it out and played some more. And I even used the little tool to get some little cool spotty techniques in here just to see the different effects that I could with the little felt tool that I had. I mean, I was just having fun. I believe this was three colors. It was a purple, a pink, and a blue. And then I went with this one here, which was just a blue and a teal. And I really got this one wet and just tilted it each way and got these lines and just got a marbly effect, which I thought was kind of cool. Then I did this one, same idea, but I did three colors and tried to keep them in line with each other just to see what kind of look I would get. And then I got this one, changing the colors up. This was pinks and a burgundy and an orange. I thought that, I think this is one of my favorite ones. Then I turned on Tim and watched some techniques with mixatives. And this was a mixative, the try. This was my first try, my only try with a mixative. And that turned out pretty cool. And then this is the look we're going for today to get as close. I actually did this one first. And I got all purples, pretty much. And then I added a little bit more to it. And this is what we're going for today. To try to get the purples, the pinks. You know, I want this purple, I want this purple, and I want some pink as well. So a couple purples and a pink. Something in between here for this panel. Kind of the look we're going for. So let's just play and we'll see where we go. Now we're playing with the actual Giannis Makula's Amaryllis collection. That's what I've used and the first two things I did was actually hot foil the background. This is the better press plate. This is a negative plate which means when you better press it or foil it it's going to foil or better press the black portion. So it's like you're getting a reverse foil the first time you foil it. So it's kind of cool. And you have a stencil available if you purchase the bundle that will allow you to stencil these in. And I'm going to do that and show those at the end of the video. I'm going to do that after recording. So I just wanted to show you what that does. This is the embossing folder we're using today for the blackout technique. It's Amaryllis Garden. It is gorgeous. Let me pull that out. And very detailed. And that's what I think is important for the blackout technique. So that's what we're using there. 
We're also going to incorporate this amaryllis die set. We're going to be using that as our focal and this press plate sentiment set, which is called Home for Christmas Sentiments. And we'll be using that in our card as well. So we're using three out of the four sets today. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up, get my alcohol inks out, and we will get playing. Okay, so I've got some supplies here. I've got three alcohol inks. I've got Purple Twilight, Amethyst, and Flamingo. I also have a dropper bottle with isopropyl alcohol, 99% in there. I have the alcohol blending solution from Ranger. And I also have put the 99% alcohol into a little mister bottle. Then I have the Ranger blow tool, the blower tool that you can spread your ink around. So these are the items I'm going to use to create this background. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, you can do one of two ways. You can mist your paper like so. And I am using Yupo synthetic paper. This is a five by seven size. You can use either side of the Yupo paper, but you also can decide to just put a puddle there in the center too. Either way is fine. Then you're just going to sprinkle the inks on and they're going to begin to react with your alcohol that is on the alcohol or the Yupo paper. So we're just going to get a covering here a little bit. And you have to remember that anything you do is fixable. You can cover it up, you can get rid of it, you can just play to your heart's content. You can't mess this really up and you get what you get. So you just have to keep going and like right now it's way too pink. I'm going to darken it up for sure. And so we'll just add some more drops here. Oh, I want more pigment. You can do little, you can do side blows to spread it different, you know, it gives you a different look. You can do straight on. It kind of has a halo in the center when you do that. You can get kind of a drippy look. You take a mister bottle, you can get a whole different effect with the mist. But then if you start blowing it, see how, look at, look at that. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. Look at that. Look at those bubbles. Isn't that neat right there? That is really super cool. So let's come back in here and maybe add a little pink right here. ink back on there. You can do that too. You can also come in here and watch this. Come in here, take this spray bottle or this and just do splatter. Isn't that cool? Have just a little bit. And again, all you have to do is get it See how, see how when I'm doing this, it's not spreading as much. So all you have to do to get it a little wetter or to get it to move again, spray it again. 
Now, of course, you don't have to keep going. I'm just showing you, I'm just showing you how you can manipulate this. Of course, you can stop any time. I'm overdoing it just to, as an ex to give you an example of what can be done. Okay. Because I, I, I'm just, you know, to give you the properties and to just show you what I've learned and will continue to learn because I think this is way fun. <laughs> now remember, the kind of look we're going for is this color. So I don't know if you can see that off the side. Kind of going for some hot pink purples. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, but that's what I was going for. So let me add some more. I mean, I really don't want white in here because I want it to be more dramatic because I want the black to be dramatic. So now I'm going to try to get some of this white to disappear. Okay, so let's try to cover our panel. And I'm doing this just because I want to do the blackout technique. But you know what? I really want it lighter than this. Not lighter, but like brighter. So let's see if I can brighten this up some. If you don't like something, you can keep going until you like it. So, let me try to get it wet. It's just quicker to get it wet with the spray bottle. It doesn't give those big, like, um, blobs of white. pink actually did the opposite of what I wanted it to do there. It's giving me white spots underneath it. Hmm, I'll do the lighter one. I think this is lighter purple. There we go. Let's get some lighter purple. Okay. It looks like a hot mess at the moment. I'm gonna let it just dry here a little bit. Let me see if I pick it up. How much rolls moves. Okay, let me just show you here. Some marbly effect. It's a little darker than I wanted to go. This needs more pink in it for what I was after. I really want it lighter than this. And I'm gonna get another piece and see if I can do one a little lighter. Look, I spritzed it over there. We might just keep it that way. Okay, I'm going to, let's, let's, let's use the blending solution this time. On there. And see how we get with this pink. Let's start out with a lot of pink. See what happens. Now let's put a little more purple in here. I don't have a lighter purple, so I'm gonna have to work with what we got. I think, let's see what this one is. Isn't that cool? It's t 
totally different, isn't it? Absolutely different. That is so wild. Now look at this one as it's dried. It's actually lightened up a lot. Look at that. It's actually lightened up a whole lot. Isn't that cool? That means this is going to be a lot lighter. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put a drop right there. I just put one drop just to try to give some variation right there. And I'm going to put some over here. Ooh, I like that. And because all this is dry up here, you see all the specks from the alcohol. So I am going to go ahead and re-wet the whole panel just so we can move it around just a little bit more. And we'll just get some soft movement here just to try to cover the page. I love the soft movement that happens right after you spritz it with alcohol. Look at there. Look at this right in here. I do one more little spritz right there. Look at that right in there. Okay, I think I'm liking this. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay, I'm going to clean this desk up and let this dry and then I will be back and we will build our card. I have die cut Giannis Makula's Amaryllis and when you die cut the two pieces together you get this outer I'm gonna call it the silver piece as well as the inner pieces which I have here in white. If you cut the background piece alone, you get the shadow. When I did this, I decided to cut it twice and I got the, well, three times, and I got the shadow, the silver outline, and the white die cut. I hope that makes sense. It's a little confusing until you die cut it out. So what I recommend is just die cut it together then die cut the background alone and you'll see what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do since I did this in three colors is we're going to inlay these pieces in here like a puzzle and I'm going to do a few pieces. I'll show you and then I'll kind of morph you through it so you don't have to sit here and watch me agonizingly put the pieces in which when you have the right tool it's not very difficult. So but I have the right tools, and that's what I always tell Randy when he's learning, is if you have the right tools, then you can easily pop these things in. And actually, it's probably easier to put the glue back here, you know, and then you can inlay it where it goes. Now, this is a pretty big piece, so I'm not going to use the, the pickup tool. I'm just going to pop that one right down there in its home where it belongs and you're going to have this look. It's going to be dramatic. The only black you're going to see is around the outer edge and you're going to have a white and silver flower. And against the backdrops, it's going to be just a bold flower because I want the background to be the main event. So I didn't want color in the flower, but I still wanted to use it. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll show you a couple of, of the inside pieces. You can use your reverse tweezers here and do like, let's say we pick up this piece here. If you then put your glue on it like this, here again, use the right tools. Mm -hmm. This is holding your piece for you. Then you can pick this piece up and you can just lay it down in place like so. It fits right down in there and it's a piece of cake. See that? 
So you just want to use your right tools and then you don't have to hassle with it and it's not a labor of love. It is just fun. You just have to find where they all go. Ta-da. So it's like a little puzzle. Put some TV on, watch a YouTube video, and just put your pieces in where they go. So easy as pie. And I will morph you to the end and we will put our card together. With some of these little tiny pieces, I just wanted to come in here and show you that it might be easier to actually bring in your pick your take your pick tool and inlay them that way. Let me show you what I mean. Put some little dots of glue in there, then use your take your pick tool and just slide it down in there like so. You turn it over and just touch it down in there like that. And then it can be down in there like that. And this tool makes that so much easier to do. Now I have to find out where that little one is. Was it this one? Yeah, there it is, right there. There we go. Okay, now I'll continue. Okay, I have my flower complete. You see there, black outline, silver and white. Okay, now I've cut these down, these panels to four and a fourth by five and a half. So A2 in size. I think they turned out absolutely gorgeous. And check out this. This was a half a sheet. So I got two card bases out of that one. Isn't that awesome? So we have options here. We can put it on this one. We could put it on this one. Or we could put it on this one. Now, the blackout technique would probably look best Hmm. Probably with the lighter background, I would think. Let's see which of these would have more light. How about we do this one? And that'll give me two different backgrounds later, a lighter and a darker to play with. So I can put these two in my stash and we'll do the blackout technique on this one. Okay? All right, to do the blackout technique, let me get the embossing folder. You will need a colorful background, the embossing folder, and archival acid-free jet black ink. So, you, what you wanna do is you want to emboss this backwards. Your Spellbinders embossing folder shows you the front here. So normally you would emboss like this. We want to emboss it upside down. Okay, so turn it over and we want to emboss it like so. So if there's an area in the embossing folder that you prefer, you can move it around and decide. I don't really have a rhyme or reason. It's all gorgeous. So, but we'll just put it in there like so, okay? Then your sandwich is simply, it tells you right, well, let's see, where does it tell you? It tells you right here on the platform, D, the 3D embossing folder with paper inside and the A platform. So we have A, you have this, and you have D, which makes 3D embossing so easy with the platinum. Now this is the Platinum 6 I'm actually using. I'm using the new Lilac Shimmer. Very pretty purple. Oops. Loud and cranky. And that's because it's got a lot of thick material in here it's going through, but that's what makes it gorgeous. So 
Let's take a look. Okay, so if you can see it, there is the indentions. And see, and that's what you want. You want the embossed indentions because those indentions are what's going to stay colorful. And everything raised is going to be inked. So now what we do is we take our ink pad and we go over this. It's interesting, that little area right there. We go over this like so. You drag the ink pad over this. Flat and easy. Like so. Turn it around. Do it some more. See that? Isn't that awesome? Maybe go a little this way. A little this way. Look how pretty it is though. Okay. So here is our panel and it looks completely different than my first one. But look, I can put my flower over this area. That, isn't that awesome? Then all I need to do to finish that card is grab one of my sentiments because I'm gonna put that right on a five by seven. And see, here was my first one. Look at there. And my ends are a little inky right now. So I could use the most wonderful time of year. I could use sparkle like you mean it. <laughs> I could use shimmer my friend. Let's see which ones of Yana's are in here. Sending you Christmas cheer. This really isn't a Christmas card though because of the colors I chose. So I will probably choose a different sentiment, but I just want to show you some of Yana's other ones. She's got Happy Holidays. Let It Snow. And Merry Christmas. These are all ones from her collection. But because of the colors I chose, I will go with a different sentiment from another collection. What is this one here? You've got that birthday glow. That's from Carissa Wiley's. Let's see if I have anything. So proud of you. What about that? So proud of you. That would be gorgeous. I might like that one. Those are also from Carissa Wiley. This, these strips. Dream big, sparkle more. I don't want anything that says sparkle because this card doesn't really sparkle. So I think I will use the, I think I'm gonna use So Proud of You. And I'll put that right there and finish my card up like so. Now I might choose a different sentiment in the final card if so, I'm going to show a final photo here at the end of the video. But I hope you've enjoyed this blackout technique on an alcohol background. And I will see you in the next video, my friends. Take care, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.